First story. I'm planning on abandoning my family as soon as I turn 18. My family stinks. I 17 turn 18 in two weeks, and I'm getting the F out of here as soon as the clock strikes midnight. My parents have an extreme bias towards my younger brothers 16 and 15. It's been like this forever. I have no idea why. I've always been the one who had to do all the chores in the house. I have also always been forced to play every single sport I possibly could, to the point where my schedule was packed 365 days a year. My father told me it would teach me to be a real man, but my brothers never had to do any of that SHT. They're both fat, lazy Fs who sit around and play video games all day and all night. They miss school at least 30% of the year, and are constantly spoiled and rotten by my parents. They already have thousands of dollars from birthdays, Christmas and other holidays. As soon as I turned 12, I was told I would no longer receive gifts from my parents other than bare essentials. I was told I had to pay for my phone and any other expenses I wanted to own, and to never ever ask for anything. I wasn't able to own a phone or anything really special for myself, until I was 16, because I couldn't find any actual jobs that paid good money. My parents also expect me to take care of my younger brothers when I'm an adult. My younger brothers have both decided they will not be going to college and do not plan on working a day in their lives. My father told me, we kept you alive, you owe it to us. F you. I'm leaving a nasty letter on the table when I leave and changing my phone number, emails and everything. They will never be able to contact me, no matter how hard they try. I know my younger brothers are going to be screwed for life since they have zero experience on how to survive in the real world but I don't care. That's my parents' burden now. I hope they go broke from having to fund my brother's lifestyles, and I hope they lose everything. I have no sympathy for these people, and I will never feel bad about them, no matter what happens to them. The only thing I owe to my parents is the fact that, because of their SHTTY treatment over the years, I am well capable of surviving on my own in the world. I'll be going to college to study finance in Virginia, they have no idea I've been accepted to any college. I never even asked, and I'm also very physically fit due to playing six sports a year. However, the trauma will never go away. They took away my entire childhood, and I will never forgive them for it. They can all go F themselves. Update. I'm happy to report that I am officially gone. So the last two weeks after I made this post have been crazy stressful, but I'll sum them up here. I changed my number a few days ago by calling my SIM card provider. Then I went and got a copy of my birth certificate, since I don't know where my actual birth certificate was I couldn't just ask my parents, and I also made sure to check that my bank account was secure and not shared with my parents. I purchased a plane ticket last week to fly into Dulles International Airport in Virginia, just outside of where I'll be attending college in Fairfax. Finally, I called one of my cousins, whom I am very close with, and asked him to please pick me up at around 12.30 a.m. last night. He agreed with my decision to leave and told me he was proud of me for taking action to improve my life. I packed my stuff up after everyone had gone to sleep and waited. I decided to keep my note to my family short and sweet. All I wrote down was that I was moving to go to college in California Elmau, and that I was never coming back. So, last night, my cousin picked me up, and we went to the police station, where I gave them my proper identification, and informed them that I am not missing and am leaving on my own accord now that I am 18. They told me they'd keep it in mind and would watch out for that potential call in the next few days. I got a few hours of sleep at my cousin's and then flew out of New Orleans International at 6 a.m. I am now sitting in my college dorm, 950 miles from home, and I've never been happier in my life. I can't wait to meet new people and finally enjoy my youth. Thank you to everyone who gave me great advice here and commented on their support. I didn't expect this post to take off like it did, but I'm happy my story has affected so many. I will update again in a few weeks. Update. Damn. This post took off again these past two days. My phone has been blowing up with demands for an update, so I shall deliver. Life has been good. I've been in contact with my cousin, who helped me, and a few other family members from back home. He said that my mother came to their house the day after I left to talk to my aunt about my leaving. She cried and gave my aunt this whole sob story about how she couldn't believe I would abandon them, and my aunt told her maybe she shouldn't have treated me so wrongly throughout my whole life which caused a huge fight and ended with my mom being thrown out of their house. So it seems my leaving has caused pretty much the uproar I imagined. I've been doing well. I've met plenty of new people and made friends through classes and dorm neighbors. I'm in a better mental state than I've been in a very long time. I feel so relieved, and it just feels like a huge weight is lifted off my shoulders. It feels so good coming on here and reading all the support and positive comments I'm receiving. I'm really grateful for this community. 
I will continue posting updates in the weeks to come. Thanks for everything, everyone. Edit. As promised, I am here for another update. I waited a long time in between updates to really let my life unfold, so I could fill you guys in on a lot. Things have been great. I went back to my hometown for Thanksgiving and Christmas to spend time with my aunts, uncles and cousins. I was literally two blocks away from my parents' house, but they are not welcome at those events anymore, so I wasn't worried. They still don't know where I am or what I'm up to, and have apparently given up on trying, which I'm perfectly happy about. College has been great. I have made lots of new friends and kept my grades up 3.9 GPA. I love my new life, honestly. I never went to therapy or anything despite numerous suggestions from some of you. But I feel like I've done well enough without it. I've learned in these months how resilient I really am. I got two jobs on the side at different restaurants in the town around campus, mostly dishwashing and working on salads. Simple stuff, but I'm making enough side cash to provide for myself. Since I got a free ride to JMU, I don't have to worry about a college savings account or anything, so that's a huge plus. Thanks for all the continued support and comments over the last few months while I've been silent. I hope you guys enjoy the update. I'll be back someday. Much love. Second story. Narcissistic Fsil demands my late husband's money for her wedding and lashed out on my father. So my brother called off the wedding. A little backstory for the setup. I was widowed a little over a year ago. My husband had a substantial life insurance policy, as well as a successful business that I recently sold. I have no financial issues. I can raise my daughter without worry. My older brother proposed to his girlfriend back in January. She's nice and seems to love my brother. We have had no issues in the past. COVID hit. So we haven't done family get-togethers or anything. Their wedding planning has been put on hold. Until recently. Our state has slowly started opening. No one has been sick. And the weather has been good. So my dad and stepmom decided to have a family dinner on their outdoor patio to discuss my brother's wedding. With my FSIL parents in attendance, they could all get on the same page. I tried to dip out, because wedding planning isn't my thing I eloped but was told my presence was requested by F. Sill. My stepmom said she thought I was going to be asked to be a bridesmaid, which would have been a no, but that's beside the point. Dinner was uneventful, but afterwards my F. Sill pulled out a three-ring binder and started handing out information packets about her wedding, when and where she wanted it, pictures of dresses she was considering, colors, ideas for catering, pictures of cakes everything a well-prepared bride could come up with. My favorite page was the list of expenses. How much she expected everyone to contribute. Her dad, her mom and stepdad, my dad and stepmom, my brother's mom, and me. I said, you expect me to contribute? That's hilarious. I was met with a stern gaze from my brother. Oh my god you're serious. Yeah, that's not happening. Cue the meltdown from the bride-to-be. Her dad speaks up and tells her that she was already told that, combined with both him and her mom and stepdad, she would be given $70,000 to do what she wanted just like they did for her sister. She started crying. My dad chimes in and says, Yeah, between the three of us, we will pay for a nice rehearsal dinner for like 30 people and an open beer and wine bar at the reception. That's it. She started screaming, like holding her hands over her ears and screaming, Why is everyone trying to ruin my life? So I said, This is where I leave. She stands up, comes to me, and gets in my face, telling me how it's all my fault. I have money so I should be willing to spend it on her, because she's going to be family. I just laughed, looked at my brother said, good luck with all that, and walked out. My Fsil blew my phone up for two days, calling me names and telling me how awful I am. I haven't talked to my brother, but my dad said the wedding planning has been put on hold while she reevaluates whether she wants to marry into a selfish family. Oh now, I know in my heart I'm an NTA, but a friend seems to think I should contribute just to keep the peace which I don't really care about at this point, and my dad and stepmom agree with me. My other siblings do too, but are trying to stay out of it. Edit. Because people keep asking on top of the 70k her parents were willing to contribute. She wanted 50k from my dad and brother's mom and 30k from me. Yes, 150k for a wedding. Also, I think she had originally asked her parents for $80,000. Edit too. This post blew up. I didn't expect it to. I just wanted to show my friend that keeping the peace was not a good idea. Thank you for all your replies. Even the one who called me a narcissist and said I should contribute. My stepmom says she has some things to tell me either tomorrow or Wednesday, whenever we can catch up. So if there is anything to update, I definitely will. Edit 3. I turned notifications off. I honestly didn't expect this to blow up like it did. 
I will update when I have something. To the commenters saying I probably could have been nicer when this happened, I can appreciate that. However, I was taken by surprise, and being nice was the furthest thing from my mind. I showed a great deal of restraint because her parents were there, and I had never met them before. If they hadn't been, there would have been a lot of cursing. A lot. Also to the ones who messaged me and asked. My daughter was spending some time with my in-laws. She hadn't seen them much since lockdown began, except over video chat. If she had been home, I probably wouldn't have gone at all. Update. Let me start by saying that I truly appreciate everyone who took the time to comment and message me. You guys are all awesome. So my stepmom wanted to talk to me, and she and I had a chat yesterday. The first thing she said was that my brother wanted to get together and talk this out. Which we did today. More on that later. My stepmom told me that she and my dad had seen Fsil act like a brat a few times towards my brother. But never anything like that night at dinner. My dad told my brother that what happened was completely ridiculous. And both he and she owed me major apologies. He also let my brother know that he now has apprehensions about my brother getting married to her. And he wanted my brother to really think about what he wanted. And that if he decided to marry her anyway, he wouldn't know how much of our family would attend. My dad did apologize to me if I felt like he didn't defend me to her. He just said that he was so shocked about what went on that he couldn't react. My dad and I are fine. As for my brother, it's sort of uneventful. We met for lunch at my dad's house today. When I walked in, he tried to hug me, but I wasn't having it. He did apologize. Sincerely, I believe. He told me that he knew about all the wedding stuff she had prepared but not the expense sheet, and that he had told her weeks ago what his parents were willing to pay for, and that she could not ask me for money. When I started laughing, he knew that she didn't listen to him, and he was pissed, but didn't want to cause a scene in front of everyone. He went on to say that when they left, he blew up on her, and she told him that she couldn't believe that he was okay with his family being so selfish, and it escalated from there with her packing a bag and going to a hotel, because her parents said she couldn't go to their house. I asked him where they stood now and he just shrugged. I asked if he still wanted to marry her, but before he answered, I said that I didn't care. It was his life, and he could do what he wanted, but I and my daughter, whom he adores would absolutely not be there. And if he did marry her, our relationship would change forever. I would never ask my dad to choose between us, and I am perfectly capable of being civil to him at family events, but that was it. I did hug him when he left, and told him that I hope this all has an outcome he can live with. And I may actually be the arsehole now, but I really don't care. I'm okay with how it ended. I don't want an apology from her. She means nothing to me now. I feel like this is over, and I can let it go. Thanks again for everyone's input. Notes. OP hasn't made a direct follow-up to this, but she stated in a comment on some other post that one Redditor recognized her, and she explained that her brother and his fiancé were still sort of together, and OP has since moved away to another state. Since then. OP has made a few posts about some non-brother related minor or otherwise, depending on your point of view issues regarding her late husband's parents. Third story. OP's golden brother F up. But OP had to pay the price. Still parents enabling him. She had enough and snapped. Me 14F. Brother Daniel. 16M. I used to live in City X. I was born and raised there. All my friends are here. All the extracurricular opportunities I have are here i.e. the debate circuit is very strong here, connections I've cultivated for youth activism, good internship opportunities etc. But my brother messed up big time about a year ago and ruined it all for us. I'm not going to go into the exact nature of what he did, but it was bad. He didn't do something that would have serious legal consequences or anything. But it was stupid, incredibly problematic, and got him landed in enough SHT for it to get spread throughout social media. He also got in trouble with the school, and he claimed he couldn't stay there because his reputation was ruined. Personally, I think he should have thought of that before he did it. My parents were mad, but they got sympathetic because he said he was getting bullied, and they wanted to protect his future. So they moved him to two other high schools, but it ended in the same way because everyone knew what happened anyway. So my parents, and he decided to move to an entirely different state, city Y, without consulting me at all. My brother's future is important. But why should my future be sacrificed just because he messed up? City Y is super small, has way SHT tier schools, and doesn't have a debate league. I also had to leave all my friends behind. No one knows about what my brother did, so he's happy. My parents are happy, so he's happy. I'm the only one who's not happy. At the risk of sounding quirky, I had a really good future in my extracurriculars. I definitely could have shaped up to be one of the best nationally, according to a lot of people, 
If I had the right coaching and competition, I could have gotten scholarships to great schools for it. But no, Daniel had to get himself into deep SHT and drag me into it too. I've been here for four months now, and I didn't talk to my brother at all for the first two months. Now we're all at home, and my frustrations are building every time I see him. So at dinner, my brother was talking about his college prospects with my parents, and I was just so frustrated that I snapped. Our conversation went like this. Um, I think I have a good shot at getting into state school. Me, like hell you do, with the SHT you did last year. If you think running away to a different city and ruining my life can make what you did go away, then you're in for a effing treat. Um, you're such a effing bee. Get over it already. Mom, don't debate. Stop blaming your brother. You need to start adjusting to city Y. Apologize for what you said. Dad. State school won't know. Me. I'll email every single college you apply to with screenshots and evidence if we don't move back to City X. That's a promise, not a threat. My parents got really furious with me for that. But I'm not joking. Ada, or my brother or parents. Comments from the OP for additional context combined from multiple comments. Daniel went on a racist rant calling POC students. He didn't like racial slurs, saying things like, that's why we need segregation again, etc. And he posted it on his main Snapchat story, instead of his private one with all his little racist buddies and accidentally left it up for hours. Obviously, there was a lot of backlash against him from students of color. But he just complained about them being sensitive snowflakes or SJWs. Our parents made him write apologies to the kids he called slurs, but he sure dragged his feet while doing it. He tried to get me to write one for him. So yeah, not a lot of remorse. His only punishments were getting grounded for two months, having to write those letters, and making him delete social media, he redownloaded them all three weeks later. And they just let him. My parents are pretty indulgent with him. Update. Hello Reddit. Before I begin, I'd like to thank everyone for how supportive they have been in response to my last post. I've gotten a lot of PMs about helping me with debate and advice, which is greatly appreciated. I haven't really gotten a chance to give y'all an update, and you'll see why. So his background, my uncle Randy, not his real name, of course doesn't have kids. But he's dating my aunt Rebecca, technically my girlfriend. But it's been eight years, so she's family. They live across the country in City Z, which is a great place, not as nice as City X for debate, but definitely better than City Y. Since they live pretty far away, we only really see them on holidays the years we spend with dad's family. Randy is very well off. I don't know how much he makes exactly. But I've stayed at his house, and it's very nice for a place in City Z. And it's not his only one. He's very generous, and he has set up college funds for me, Daniel, and Rebecca's little brother Ricky. I'd still rather get a scholarship than use Randy's money, because I don't want to be a burden. Ricky is younger than me, so sometimes I tutor him over the phone. We're pretty close. I also talk to my uncle fairly frequently. We talk about politics together. However, he doesn't really speak to or like Daniel, because he's rude to Rebecca. Anyway. I was helping Ricky with his math homework shortly after my original post when I just started to cry. I don't really know what came over me, but I haven't told anyone about how upset I was before then because there's so much else going on in the world. Ricky and I talked, and I found out that my parents actually told the entire family that the reason we were moving was because City Y had a better debate circuit, and they believed it because no one else does debate. I hadn't discussed the move with them because I bottle my emotions, and they didn't really ask me about the move because they assumed I wanted it. I ended up talking to my uncle about it, and we had a really great conversation about it. He's extremely angry at my parents and Daniel. This was the second to last straw for him, and he ended up removing half of Daniel's college fund and splitting it into me and Ricky's funds. Daniel was very upset because he'd been relying on that money and our parents hadn't saved up. So he threw my phone down the stairs. Then I emailed my uncle from my laptop, and he revoked the rest of Daniel's college fund too. My parents are quite angry at me too, because it's not like they can come up with 200k by the time Daniel goes to college. My uncle has offered for me to come stay with them in City Z, which I have taken him up on. He also generously bought me a new phone, which I'm writing this post on right now. Edit. I've gotten a lot of messages, and I can't really answer them all, so I'll just address the most common questions. What did your brother do? Posted a racist Snapchat rant on his public story, instead of private. I don't want to go too into detail besides that. Is insert video of a racist kid your brother? Either way, I'm not going to confirm or deny it. However, I'm really impressed at the variety of racist kids vaguely fitting Daniel's description that you guys have managed to find. Have your parents agreed to your moving in with your uncle? Short answer. Yes. Long answer. 
It took a lot of pressure from other family members, but they conceded. I'll be with them on holidays. And yes, I agree. My uncle is fantastic. I'm a very lucky niece to have him. Comments from the OP for additional context. When my brother isn't being passive-aggressive, he's ignoring me. Usually, when we make eye contact, he'll just walk into a different room and slam the door really loudly or play with his friends and complain about his B sister. Our rooms are next to each other. My parents are upset. They think the whole situation has blown up a lot more than they wanted, especially considering that a lot of the family is upset that they lied. They've calmed down a lot, but occasionally my mom will beg me to convince my uncle to change his mind. So frosty is the term I'd use. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.